I'm very passionate about this community. Like everybody I work with uh, is just so excited about Polkadot and Kusama. Like, you know, we've helped many, many people uh, quit their day jobs or, 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 or reduce their dependence on their work in the real world, some work that they weren't even excited to do. Welcome to the Alpha Podcast, brought to you by Neverland Labs and hosted by me, Jessa, here in Buenos Aires. We're at the Polka Dot Decoded Conference in Buenos Aires. This is a special edition. These episodes are unique because I'm co-hosting them with Jay, who has his own podcast, and we're kind of working together where we're co-interviewing people and switching things up. There'll be a version on his channel and there'll be a version on this channel. So make sure to check out both versions and we already know mine, it's gonna be better. I wanna remind you that everything you're about to hear is not financial advice, nor do we endorse any of the projects or guests on the show. It is simply meant for educational purposes and sometimes we're learning about these people or projects in real time. While this is brought to you by Neverland Labs, the opinions expressed are of mine, the guests, and also Jay's. I want to give a huge shout out to Polka House who brought us out here to make this happen. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this series and let's tap into the episode. Welcome to the Alpha Podcast. Pleasure to be here, man. Yeah, Huge yeah. fan, actually. We, we just did a whole bunch of podcasts all day. Yeah. The last two days, um, we did like nine. Yeah. And uh, we co-hosted them. So wanted to do this to introduce Jay. This is going to be on both of our channels, so we're essentially going to be interviewing each other. You know what I like about you, man? Huh. You kind of have this like zest for life. You kind of have this like attitude where you have to get it all done and you have to do as much as possible before you go. Yeah, that was probably pretty accurate. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I think we I think we really vibed on that. You know, it was yeah. really easy picking this all up with you and just uh, well, so everybody knows we we had a lot of requests for this space. None of them were really met or anything like that. Huh. So so we spent our first like four hours together building this uh, first time meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not even like yeah. <laughs> like, oh hey, now we got to do this. Let's work together. <laughs> it was. It was totally flawless, man. <laughs> Turned out the initial, uh, the initial space that we got. What is that? Is that a little kid? Are there children here? I, I, know. What? I wonder what their parachain project is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the kindergarten. Okay, it's so the ball pit. yeah, yeah, the <laughs> ball pit. They, they came for the ball pit. <laughs> so essentially, what we what we showed up with was not near what we requested, and so yeah. we we put this whole thing together. It kind of looked like a dunk tank a little bit initially, mm-hmm. and uh, literally pulled this entire thing together. Since we are now getting to the intro, can you introduce yourself? I'm Jay Chirana. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. Uh, currently, uh, recently escaped Canada, and uh, I create content for the polka dot ecosystem, Polkadon Kusama, with a channel called The Kusamarian, a media outlet we've been building for the last year. We're trying to decentralize the story of Datsama. I mean, The Kusamarian is one point of view, but uh, we were also interested in getting uh, and enabling many points of view to come up and create their own media outlets so we can really get a full idea of the story of Datsama. And so uh, we've connected a bunch of interested uh, people who are interested in creating content around Datsama with sources of funding. Uh, we created a channel. Uh, so funding can flow to the people who are working hardest, and uh, that's called WAG Media. That's what I do from morning to night, WAG Media and the Kusamarian. Yeah, what, what got you, like, what, what's your background? What, did you, were you always a creator, content creator? Or? Yeah, actually my background is uh, in stage, like live performance, uh, theater, production, directing. I was an actor as well, not a bad one, but... Um, I really, really like to work on the, the larger story. Most of my creative uh, history is in uh, putting up uh, theater shows. And in fact, what I really want to do, the reason why I'm in this space, is I want to erect a stage in Toronto. It's just such a multicultural city, so many human stories coming together. And we don't really have like a, a public space where we can kind of find that meta narrative that you know we all belong to. So I actually got into crypto because uh, I lost my job uh, because of COVID. You know, a lot, not a lot of live performances and stuff. <laughs> and uh, I was searching for capital, and then I found Bitcoin, and that was only a couple years ago. And then eventually found Polkadot, and like this is where I can contribute. You're, you're very uh, immersed in this ecosystem. Yeah. And, uh, why? I feel like I can add a lot. There's so much to do in Polkadot and Kusama. There's so much work to do. It's like. The technology is like this, it's like this vast expanse of possibilities, right? And we got to kind of build a city in it. 
and you know we have like different projects building different buildings and, and whatnot but like if we really want to fill it up we have to get like lots of people involved and lots of people going so honestly I think this technology you know it has it's designed to uh, augment every other blockchain out there to like make them all better and make them talk and I'm here because there's lots of work to do I'm very passionate about this community like everybody I work with uh, is just so excited about Polkadot and Kusama like you know we've helped many many people uh, quit their day jobs or or, or or reduce their dependence on their work in the real world, some work that they weren't even excited to do, to work on Polkadot and Kusama. It's just so awesome. Are, are you full-time on this? Like, you, you have a sustainable income yeah. that allows you to do this? Yeah, and because Polkadot and Kusama have a treasury and a governance that uh, takes care of it, yeah, it was like a process of, like, I just started creating videos to, like, help people use the... Just on your own accord? Yeah, yeah, I just, like, I was trying to figure it out. It was difficult. And so um, I started creating videos about it on a show called Polkadot Kusama, What the FAQ? The treasury's worth like, between Polkadot and Kusama, like several hundreds of millions of dollars, right? And it's like, well, that's a lot of capital. So it's not so easy to, um, <laughs> to, to, to distribute capital in an efficient way, right? So right. it's like really been building up for years. And one of the ways that it gets distributed is uh, by people creating content, they submit themselves or they get submitted for something called a tip and the council will vote on like how much they think something's worth and basically I just like slowly transitioned from you know basically I was like working on Uber you know uh, cycling <laughs> on Uber around Toronto during COVID and I basically just like transitioned from doing that making videos every day and eventually the tips just added up where I could just jump off tips turned into something called spending proposals where it's like I have this project I want money ahead of time uh, we just got that in January um We've done two quarters of being sponsored by the Treasury. And then that's with the WAG Media work there. Basically, I'm trying to expedite this process for a lot of people. So what I went through, I'm trying to make help other people go through the same thing. Amazing. And get that story out more. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you make content? Every day. Every day? Are you on it every day? Yeah, man. I work <laughs> I work morning to night. Yeah. Yeah. Like what drives you to, to, to work like that? I love being useful and productive and I love building things that like help other people be excited about life you know what I mean like WAG Media is so cool like it's just full of people who are just like seeing like oh when you make that first dollar online it's it's a total shift uh, of reality right it's like oh like I change my time for money and I, I work with my body for money but then when when you like when you just turn it into ah you know I create information or I create an idea or I create a tool online and I can distribute that to thousands of people at once it's, it's, it's a colossal shift in mentality so I don't remember the question but like I just think that's cool <laughs> in a long ass day yeah, yeah, I was just about to say it, it is literally uh, my watch is dead that's how long it is <laughs> oh it's so beautiful uh, man yeah I mean I, I just wanted to, to hop in and do do something quick and short and yeah. uh, introduce you to the community uh, the next like what, I don't know how many episodes we just shot here, but they are all uh, co-hosted with Jay, and it was actually really awesome. The dynamic was well. I, yeah. I, I think both of us felt more comfortable because during the interviews, like you can kind of rely on somebody else coming up with a question, so it allows us to be more present in those kind of conversations because right. you're, you're not constantly like, oh shoot, I don't want any dead, dead moments in this yeah a lot of the people that we're interviewing are like very short on their time like they're busy people like we're, these are very important and very some of them are like like gavin like dude they were literally pulling him off and we're saying like you you got so many other things to do right now and he just kept going we there's literally people in the background like stop get out of here and we, we just kept going and uh yeah. that being said like we have to take advantage of every second that we have and and i think having you be a part of it with me was really cool because we were able to to fill those gaps and it allowed i think i'm speaking for you but both of us to kind of fall into the conversation a little easier absolutely man and it was so great to have you there you're a fantastic interviewer and um, it's it's really interesting how like you took this conversation and made an interview about me but i actually had some questions i wanted to swing around on you too <laughs> there because like my audience has no idea who you are i hope you're enjoying this episode is brought to you by neverland labs we are a web3 entertainment company bringing you the hottest and most entertaining stuff in the space from media like this podcast to video games with west coast customs the meta whips the meta racers and 
and also bridging the digital and physical assets together and in real life events. We got season two of the MetaWhips coming soon. So make sure to stay up on that. Let's get back into the episode. But like you've been showing me some of the content you're creating, you have this real passion for filming life, turning it into content and sharing it with other people. Where the hell did this passion for the camera and content come from? I don't, I, honestly, I don't know where that piece of it came from. I, I, there is a piece of me that I feel like I, like I grind really hard and I, I do a lot of things that other people don't do. I, I think like I, I was bullied a lot when I was younger and um, I think felt very misunderstood. I think a lot of that is allowed me to, to film and express myself in a way where I can show people like who I am. I get to write my narrative and not only, mm. like you see a lot of people who are like, you know, people are fake on Instagram or fake online and stuff like that. And I don't know if you're familiar who, with uh, Tom Bilyeu, but one yeah, of the, I know Tom. Yeah, so uh, Not, he, I don't know. I know. Him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know Tom. But, yeah, so but. his his content has like been one of the, the it's been very life changing. Um, but one of the things that he says is like the only thing that matters is how you care about yourself by yourself. And I wholeheartedly believe in that. And I spend so much time working on myself and trying to like regardless of if there's a camera on me, if anybody sees it. Like the person who I am by myself, and I, that's the only thing that matters. And I have spent so much time building those things and doing those things, and I've gone through literally shit experiences in life. I think that I can provide a lot of value in showcasing my life because I feel like I came from, I, I, I went through struggles and I did a lot of things, and I can share that by just showing people yeah. who I am as a person. Yeah. And uh, the things that I showcase online are, are really the things that I do. I, I mean, it's uh, what I show online is not even a fraction of the things behind the scenes of what I put into the th things that I do. I mean, I, I ran every day I was here. I ran, I've, I've haven't missed a day in 300 days. Yeah. You said earlier that like you do, you do things that nobody else does. Like, have you ever thought about running like a hundred miles at once? Never. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm training. At, so, but, but mind you, like a lot of people do that. It's not anything special, but I think... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is pretty special, man. In fact, uh, I've never met anybody who wanted to do that. Since I was young, I've lived set kind of this uh, idea of setting impossible goals mm -hmm. so that uh, a lot of people are like, oh, you're going to fail or you're gonna, it's going to have this um, negative impact on feeling good about yourself or something like that. Right, don't but, try so you don't get yeah, hurt. But but my philosophy is like, if I set impossible goals, if I fall short, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna still accomplish more than probably the majority of the people around me. And not only that, like I'm gonna do more than I probably would have had I set an obtainable goal. Because yes. so there's something in our brains where we like, we'll set this obtainable goal and then once we hit that, we're, we're done. Like yeah. we don't even try to push further because it's just, if it's hard, your brain will literally lie to you. It's like, yeah. you did it. You showed up. You did what you came here to do. That We're good. Like, you got that dopamine you hit. You fulfilled it. Yeah. And, and people don't ever actually experience what is it they're capable of because they've set the goal. They already, before going into it, told themselves what their limitations were. That's right. So, I, I mean, I might not ever feel fulfilled because I don't hit a goal, right. but I can promise you I will accomplish more than, than I would have even anticipated being able to because where my, I'm aiming for is like beyond what's even capable. So, Can you tell us anything about the ultimate goal that you're aiming for, like let's say within the span of your lifetime? Like, <laughs> I've never ever said this. <laughs> like, There's a weird piece in me that one day I want to run for president of the United States. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Why the hell not, man? I would do that if I was American. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, would, you, but, would you run for a party? Would you create your own party? What's going on? Um, I, I definitely don't fall on either side. Uh, it, like there's there's values on on both sides that Which I probably the majority of people I, I think we talked about kind of social illusions yeah and I think there is a massive social illusion that there are more people on extreme right or extreme left yeah and exactly. I, I think you know the, the more people I talk to uh, in general it's like people are, are relatively logical but somehow when it's like 
they get in these groups and then uh, that's what yeah they go in that direction mm-hmm. and, and online particularly <laughs> yeah exactly um, yeah. but yeah i think i think there's a there's a middle ground and, and there's a huge huge need to connect people together i i mean if i were to do it it probably wouldn't be for uh till 2034 not that i've planned are, that are you announcing <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have never thought that. Kanye's really. tweeting furiously right yeah, now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Set like a, a goal of trying to accomplish something like that in 20 sure. years. And um, the first 10 would re- be building a passive income stream that allows me to, to take 10 full years of focusing on only becoming a, a president. And that's, that involves like listening to to people around the world to figure out, you know, I feel like if I can focus my entire energy for 10 years on what it would take to be a strong leader, yeah, it's just very doable. Even if you inspired like 20 people like you trying to do that, right? Yeah. If more people are actually focusing on being a great leader yeah. rather than acquiring power, you know? To- to- I mean, that's the thing. And I think it goes back to when you ask like, why do I want to be in the, the limelight or why do I want to do put myself on these things and like, I honestly have put so much energy into growing as a human being that I feel like, and establishing value systems, that I would love to be an influence in a positive way to people around me. Yeah. And a lot of people say that, like, I want to inspire people and stuff like that, but I truly, I I don't want to inspire people by telling anybody what to do. I want to show them. Right. I want, like... Give them an opportunity to do great things themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I want somebody to see me do something insane and work on myself and build myself and be kind and humble and value listening to people and I I think a lot of those things becoming cool will inspire people to want to do those things and so I I do spend so much time like running and um, the the running thing is like a little piece of me is I have to establish this discipline of doing it every single day, something that is really difficult. Traveling the world and still maintaining running every single day yeah. is, a, is a discipline. It's not even about the running. It's the discipline that I'm establishing in my brain. Yeah. Because if I have to, if I have the audacity to even dream about being a president, like I have to be willing to do the work that nobody else is willing to do. I just want to say I'm really sorry for bailing on you on that run I said I'd go on yesterday, but I was super <laughs> impressed that after that day, you went out and did that. There, there's, there's nothing. There's no, I was like, I came back from Lisbon uh, from the Solana Breakpoint conference, and I got really sick. Uh, it was not, not COVID, but it was, I mean, sick nonetheless. And um, I think I was just very, very worn down. But I, there was a day where that I still went and ran super, super sick, and like it... Mm. It hurts so bad to breathe because I it just felt like there's glass in my lungs. Yeah. And on the run, I started crying. And it was interesting because it wasn't about the pain. It was it, like it hurt. But the cry was, I was proud of myself for being out there doing something that probably nobody else would be doing. Because it's way, the, the excuses are there. And I thought yeah. literally zero people would ever fault me if I'm like, yeah, I missed the day that I was really sick yeah, and no, yeah. throwing up, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't do it. And nobody knows that this is the first time anybody knows that I still did it. Yeah. So there was no external validation. There was right. none of that. Right. It was just, I said I was going to do this. This is the discipline. And I went out there and that's why I, I teared up. I cried because it was like, I'm here. I'm doing it and I'm not shortcutting it. I'm going. You know, what? I just want to tie this. We just did an interview with Alex after you know he set up this amazing event like what a what an incredible individual who like makes stuff happen in this world you know what i mean and it's really cool this technology that we both you know make content about this web3 technology you know it's really empowering individuals to come up and do the hard thing and make a huge difference and it's this attitude of just going out and getting it not for any other validation or not not for, for, for to show off for anybody but just like you could now go out and build it and make it happen. Yeah. And, you know, that's going to change the world, really. I, th- I think we're in a, a time where literally anybody can create something out of nothing. Yeah. So if, it, if anybody takes anything from this, like, find your inner artist, because I truly think that the definition of an artist is creating something from nothing. 
Jessup, man, I've felt Jay. a lot of love and appreciation for you over the last couple of days, and I'm excited to keep working with you. Likewise. Uh, and telling, bringing all this, uh, bringing this whole new world to the people at home and getting them inspired to do the same. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. Where can people find you? At Golden Calf, G-L-D-N-C-A-L-F. Golden Calf on Twitter this is the best place to find me and all the projects I'm working on. How about yourself? You can follow me at Jessup11 on pretty much everything and the uh, company that I co-founded with my cousins that is uh, the, the, the Alpha Podcast is the company podcast, uh, Neverland Labs. So that's at N-V-R-L-A-N-D-L-A-B-S. Nice. All right. I think we uh, should probably go. Yeah, let's let's go take watch a little a, bit of music. Yeah, 10 minute break and then back to work. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all the uh, things that you're supposed to do. Check yes. out Jay or check out me if you're on Jay's uh, version of this. Yeah. <laughs> Space monkeys out. <laughs> Aquafish, we out. <laughs> all right, bye.